everyone and welcome back to another episode of Tulane Robotics. Today I'm going to be t teaching you how to make your robot drive perfectly straight using the gyro and some PID math. Now PID is some crazy stuff so this will be a bit longer of a video than normal. Let's get started. So the very first thing you want to do is go to this variables tab and we're going to be going here a lot and we're going to be making a variable called error and what error does is well it's basically just how much the robot is off by. Pretty simple. So then we're going to want to make another variable, and this one's called kp, and this is the variable we use to control proportional. Then we've got ki, which controls integral. Then we've got kd, which controls derivative. Pretty simple. Yeah, we're going to want to drag set blocks out for each of these. So just so we can, these are going to be where we tune the values later on in the program. We're going to have them in pid order just so it's easy to tell at a glance what we're doing. Then we're going to want to make an a loop delay time variable and we're gonna want to set this one to some uh, small number um, actually we're gonna we're gonna do that later then we're going to need to grab a reset angle block and I'm as you can tell I'm doing this in EV3 classroom it's it's basically the same in spike prime like, no difference um, so we're gonna want to go to control and grab a forever loop. You could replace this with my rotations loop block that I did a video on. Um, you could replace this with like ba like any loop for seconds, anything. Now we're gonna wanna make a variable called input. And the only reason we're doing this is, or we're gonna wanna put the angle value from our gyro in that. The only reason we're doing that is because that way it updates every loop and it's just useful because we don't want it to have be like, oh yeah, your input is 90 degrees every time when we want it to be fluid. So we're gonna wanna make a variable called proportional. We're gonna wanna make a variable, um, yeah, yeah, just put that there. Um, we're gonna be putting some blocks in the um, out input bubble, but um, that'll come later. Right now we're just getting the blocks in place. We're gonna wanna make one called integral and you have one guess as to what this last one's called. Did you guess derivative? Because you're correct. Shocker of the century right there. We are making a derivative variable. And once again, we're going to put a block right there. And right now, this isn't doing any math. It's kind of just, just getting blocks ready. We're going to be doing that later. I'll be explaining what each one does. And now we're going to make a variable called previous error, which is the error from the last loop. And we're going to want to set previous error. We're going to set the pre, or yeah, we want to get a start moving block. And so that's all the blocks in place. Now we need to actually start filling them in so they do more than nothing. Because right now they're kind of doing nothing. So we are, uh, yeah, this, at, at the top we've got like the setting for everything. Um, right now everything's just zero. I'm going to set the loop delay time to, um, I'm going to set the loop delay time to 0 0.05 seconds, and then we're going to, we're going to need a m minus operator block. We're going to set it to 0 minus input. Um, this basically just inverts the input so that the error isn't getting the input straight. This makes math. A, this makes it easier when we're doing the proportional, the integral, and the derivative parts. So next, we're going to need to do proportional, and proportional. We're literally just going to. Uh, we're going to literally just stick. Oh, uh, not input. We're going to literally just stick an error bubble in there because error is already inverted. The way a proportional works, it basically just flips the input and tells the robot to do that. So if your robot's facing 90 degrees, it's going to say, oh, you need to be facing negative 90 degrees. Get over there. And if we hit zero on the way, great, we'll stop there. Like, you need to be turning to get to 90 degrees to get to zero, negative 90 degrees to get to zero. Do that. Then we're going to be doing integral. And integral is somewhat less useful and more complicated, but it's still an important part. Um, so to set integral, um, to set integral, we're going to need an operators 
times block and an operator's plus block. And we're going to put the plus block in the first slot of the times block. We're going to grab an error bubble and put it in the first slot, then a previous error in the second slot. Actually, we're going to put the error in the second slot, and we're going to put integral in the first slot, and we're going to multiply it by the loop delay time. And what this does is integral plus the error. So it integrates the error, or it integrates integral into the error just to kind of smooth it out over time to avoid wild fluctuations. And then it multiplies it by loop delay time to make it smaller because loop delay time is small, just to help not make things go crazy. Okay, so then we're going to set derivative, and we're going to need a divided by block as well as a minus block from the operators tab. And So we're going to need to go to the variables tab and grab an error bubble. And we're going to put a previous error in the second bubble. And then we're going to put loop divided by loop delay time. And error minus previous error divided by loop delay time. Basically, this helps our robot not overshoot. It sees, oh yeah, you've been increasing, you've been going, you've been increasing your rate of change very hot, very fast. So now you're going to want to increase it. You're going to want to keep increasing it fast. You're or if your rate of error is pretty low, you're going to want to keep going. You're going to want to keep it low, not just go at a constant rate. So this one really helps prevent overshoot, as you'll see in the testing video that I did. And now we're going to need to go to the operators tab and grab a whole bunch of math blocks. We're going to need three plus blocks as well as three times blocks. And we're going to need to set our movement motors as well as our movement speed. And for a PID program, 50% works just fine. So now that we have all those code bubbles out, we can actually start making the code that makes the robot move. So we're, we're, we're going to want to put a plus block in the first slot of the plus block and a times block in each slot of the times block. Um, we actually only need two plus blocks. I kind of made a mistake there. But now we're going to need to multiply kp times the proportional ki times the integral and kd times the derivative. That's literally all the math we need to get that moving. Now, there is one thing we need to do, because our kp, ki, and kd value, actually, we, we need to set the previous error to error, and we also need to make the robot wait for loop delay time seconds, because otherwise it, it gets totally thrown off. There is one more thing we need to do, and that is tuning the kp, ki, and kd values. So with kp, 1 is a great starting value, OK? Um, I use, you, you can adjust it from there. I find that 1 works great for a simple gyro. You are going to need to tune these values differently depending on what you're doing. If you want your robot moving like exactly five rotations, um, which I find the default block's pretty good for that, you're going to want to do it differently than if you're line following. For KD, a great value is like 0 0.25. And KI, it's, it's less important. I find a smaller value like 0 0.2 works great. You are going to have to tune these according to your own needs. This is, I just found that this works well for my gyro program. Um, please don't use these values. Find your own. It's, it's a whole bunch of fun doing a bunch of trial and error. Not really, but it's worth it in the end. Then we reset the angle. And we set our movement motors and movement speed. 
And then we start the loop where it's actually using the gyro. So we set our input to whatever angle the gyro is at. Then we invert it so that the error is basically however you want to correct the robot's driving. Like if you're facing 20 degrees, the robot's going to say, turn like you would to get to 20 degrees and stop if you hit zero. Then you set proportional to error because that, that's like the, the bulk of the actual code. If you set proportional to error, it's going to tell the robot, yeah, just turn until you get to where you need to go. And if you're, if you're off by a bunch, I'm going to correct you by a bunch. If you're off by a little, I'm going to correct you by a little. Then we have integral, which basically stabilizes the program over time. So if there's a bunch of oscillations and fluctuations, it's going to correct. Like it's going to smooth those out a bit. Derivative, it's error. it compares the current error and the previous error. And hey, the previous error was pretty small. The current error is pretty big. We're probably doing something wrong. Or the difference between the previous error and the current error is pretty big. We should probably keep going fast. The difference between the previous error and the current error is pretty small. We should probably go slow. Then it actually starts moving, multiplying the proportional values by the KP controller, the, um, the integral values by the KI controller, and the KD value, or the derivative values by the KD controller. And then it just sets the previous error to error to get ready for the next loop. And then it waits for loop delay times seconds just so that we're not immediately starting the next loop. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope this video was useful. Um, if you found any problems or you just want things explained a bit more clearly when I have time to formulate ideas, please email me. If you want to send screenshots, great. If you want to send ro uh, videos of your robot doing it or failing so I can try and help you figure it out, great. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.